All right. Hey guys, it's Addison, and this video is about awesome Google things. Um, really, I'm going to go over three things that you as um, a public affairs officer or MWR can do to help not only uh, your website, but also just like the people who live at your installation. Um, I'm going to go over maps, analytics, and Google Search Console. Um, but the first step to doing any of this is going to be for you to set up a Gmail account for, you know, like your public affairs. Like, so you don't want it to say like Addison Kruver at gmail.com. You're going to want it to say like, I think mine was Fort Stewart web team at gmail.com. Um, so that's going to be the first one. First step. Um, and then, um, well, let's start with, let's start with Google Maps. All right. So there are a lot of things you can do with Google Maps, but one thing that is really awesome is let's say you're logged in as, you know, Fort Stewart web team or whatever like that. Um, when you add things to Google Maps, uh, especially, um, you know, like all kinds of like hours and the link to your website, you're going to help people find what they're looking for and also drive traffic to your website. So let me, let me give you an example. Okay. So I've got the Fort Stewart third ID museum here. All right. I'm going to click on it and it's going to pop up eventually. All right. Now you see all this stuff, right? Uh, it's got this website here and all that kind of stuff. That's wrong. That's an old website, right? And that may not be their hours and all kinds of stuff. So when you're logged in, I want you to click on it and click suggest and edit. And then you can change the name or other details. And this is where the magic happens. So not only can um, you change like the location, the category, um, you can move the position on the map, you know, like if it's in the wrong place, which is, I mean, usually what it is. Uh, you can change the phone number. You can change the website like this one. Yeah, that's old. Like this should be to your home.army.mil website. Um, you can add a photo, which is also really great. And um, all kind, and anybody can do this, right? But when you keep on doing this and as logged in as your official Gmail, you start to get like um, kind of kudos on Google Maps and um, you'll start to get these like really cool emails. So hold on, I'll show that to you in a second. But this is crucial. Adding the hours, adding the website, the correct phone number, all kinds of stuff to these locations. Like I said, anybody can do it, but when you go and do it, not only do we make sure that it's correct, but also you're going to be helping all of your other soldiers, right? So, um, for example, um, this obviously is the wrong website. So if they had any kind of different COVID hours, they wouldn't be able to find them. Um, however, I bet they can find them on the Fort Sewer website, which is what this link should be. Um, <coughs> All right, so let me show you, um, yeah, let me do cancel. Now that's an already existing one. You can also just like add something like, you know, if you scroll in, you can like satellite. And what you do is you click on it. Come on, it's thinking. Add a missing place. And then it'll give you all that stuff. Oh, my internet's being like so slow. All right, so you can add places too. Um, I added a lot of stuff when I was at Fort Stewart and I want to give you an idea of the impact this has. So uh, a couple of times I accidentally added things as Addison Kruver and not like in my personal Gmail and not like as Fort Stewart web team. And I keep on receiving these emails. Like this one is from June 16th, 2021. And the places I have added have had over 500,000 views on Google. Okay. That's just the places that I created. 
Okay, here's another example. I added a photo uh, when I went around, like when I was making the Fort Stewart app, I went around and took nice updated photos of all like the, you know, popular places like ID cards and deers and this one's billeting. Um, and uh, I must have added this photo when I was as, you know, logged in as my personal one. And I just got this email in April 2021. And just this photo of billeting has had 20,000 views on Google. Okay. So not only is that 20,000 opportunities for someone to go to my website or the Fort Stewart website, um, but it also is just makes your um, installation just a little bit more in the 21st century. Uh, so uh, like I said, doing things on Google Maps, even just adding like one thing a week will help a lot of people. And especially with those nice photos and stuff like that, because, you know, when, when I say anybody can add this, remember anybody can add it. So, you know, if, if, um, if someone's upset about deers being closed, they can put a photo of it on Google Maps, you know? However, uh, photos like this who get like, you know, views and likes are usually the ones that move up to the, the top of the list. So those bad photos will kind of like, you know, sink down below. Okay, so that's Google Maps. Uh, like I said, you just add a place or edit an existing one, um, but that is absolutely huge. Okay. Now, the second thing um, you're going to need is the analytics. Now, Google Analytics is, um, you know, a whole different video. I know you guys have seen my other videos. I'm going to do another one about specific stuff. But if you haven't set up Google Analytics, you need to go to my videos and watch that stuff. Okay. I need to make a new one because there's, um, there's like a new type of an analytics, but you guys need this. Like if you don't have your own analytics on here, you know, like a, a tag, you got to set it up. There, there's no way that you're going to be able to understand your users without and, and you know, uh, improve your website without this. Now, the third one, um, like I said, we'll do another video on that. The third one is not as common. Um, but after you set up analytics, I want you to set up a Google Search Console account, all right? And this is cool stuff, all right? Let me give an example. I'm looking at Fort Lewis right now, and that's because, or um, JBLM, that's because um, the public affairs officer like invited me to, um, like added me as like someone who can view the analytics on Google Search Console. And this is going to tell you what search terms people are using to get to your website. It can also tell you the search terms that people are using to get to certain pages. Like for example, I, I'm at, you know, I'm viewing JBLM and I clicked on search results. Now at first, it's just gonna show me the qu queries, right? So this is queries is what people typed into to Google to find you, right? So ATARS Army, someone click, uh, type that in and that resulted in 33,000 clicks to the JBLM website within the last three months, okay? Um, <coughs> the impressions is 46,000 times people typed in ATARS Army JBLM popped up, but they didn't click on it. Okay. Um, and I'm going to do another video about how to like decipher all that kind of stuff, but this is, this is cool, right? This, so this is just the queries. Let's go to the pages. Okay. So you can click on the pages and then you can click on, let's see. Um, let's just do the home page, right? So now I'm viewing the home page. Okay, last three months. Now I'm gonna click back to queries. Okay, and this is what people are typing in to get to the home page, just the home page. They typed in JBLM and that resulted in the most amount of clicks. Joint Base Lewis McCord, you know, 
not very close second. And this is what people are typing in. Isn't that cool? So like, let's say you have, um, I used this to help you guys with um, the, um, I think like religious services office and ID cards and deers. Let's check this out, okay? Okay, here we go. Here is ID cards and deers. So let's click on that. So I want to know what people, what terms people were searching when looking for ID cards and deers. All right. So the most amount of clicks resulted when people typed in deers JBLM. But hold on, look at this. Look at how many different words are in here. We've got ID card, deers, Wheeler Hall, Waller Hall. I don't know what that is, but that must be where the deers office is. ID card, rapids. Um, let's do this one. Let's apply, let's go to the last 16 months. What's the most popular that, that resulted in clicks? All right, so still, still deers. Mm, that's the same number. Oh, it probably doesn't go back that far because I just set this up. So, but either way, guys, this is cool stuff, okay? Now, here's another cool thing about Google Search Console. Um, now that JBLM invited me to their Search Console, uh, the like automatic um, email thing will send me emails about SEO problems. Okay, so remember when we said, um, you know, SEO and that kind of stuff, like mobile usability. So like, for example, uh, this one says, you know, the clickable elements are too close together. So let me, let me, let me just show you what that means. Um, cause it's going to take you to the, the page. Um, here, I'll just do it right now. So it says on this page, I've got something wrong that's affecting my, my mobile usability. Okay. So it went over here, pulled up the search console and it says clickable elements are too close together. Huh? That's weird. So hold on, let me make this smaller so you can see what I'm clicking. Okay, so I'm gonna click this little open a new tab. All right, let's see what it is. Okay, that makes sense. So this looks like JBLM has started a uh, calendar but when they go to view event, there's no um, styling at all. This is all very like basic HTML. There's no styling at all, no CSS, no nothing like that. So that makes sense. Um, when it says that the elements are too close together, that means that if someone's viewing this on their phone, right? Addison is viewing the event on their phone, on my phone. That means that it's gonna be really hard for me to click this link and not that link, okay? This link and not that link because they're so close together. And there's like an algorithm to figure out, okay, like you need to space out links this much to make sure that when someone clicks on it, they're clicking the one they want, not accidentally the one next to it. Um, I mean, we could go for days for mobile usability, but what it really means is that if a page exists like this and it it's got like a usability issue, meaning the, the clickable elements are too close together, that means that it's going to drop down in the Google results because Google will always try to show a user, someone, whatever they're searching, they're gonna to try to show a user not only what matches their result, but also something that is a good website. Like if we had a website that was all just plain HTML, it, it would go way down to the bottom, okay? It's that SEO stuff, you know, all of the metadata and like all the high speed things that we do with the headings and all that kind of stuff that help your results get to the top of Google. So, but nevertheless, knowing that you can set up a Google Search Console account and they will email you about usability issues that obviously you didn't know about because you wouldn't have done it in the first place uh, is great, great to know. So um, 
Uh, like I said, I'm going to do some other videos about, you know, uh, how to how to do this, that, and the other um, with maps and analytics and stuff. But, you know, I just, I just wanted to go over these things because these are three completely free things that you can do to help people not only get to your website, get the right information, and make life just like a little bit easier on post. So, all right. I think I'll do... I think I'll do analytics next.